Giddy. Hello everyone, my name is Claire and today we're going to review this book. It's The Wizard of Oz. Let's go and read it. Dorothy lived on a lonely farm in Casas with only her uncle Henry and Aunt Em and her little dog Toto for company. One day, as they played outside, the sky grew dark. Then the wind went up with a chilling moan. There's a cyclone coming, called her Uncle Henry. Quick, into the cellar! In a panic, Toto ran to hide under her bed. Dorothy dashed after him as the wind shrieked and the whole house shook. With a mighty wrench, the cyclone whirled the house into the sky. Dorothy shivered with terror. What will happen to us, Toto? she whispered. The house sailed into, through the sky for hours. Suddenly, with a sickening jolt, we landed. Landed. Welcome to Oz, cried a man in a pointed hat. Oh, and thank you. You just killed the wick witch of the east and set her free. Killed? Sound kind of strange. Who? What? As asked Dorothy, horrified. I haven't killed anyone. Well, your house did. A woman told her, "Look, two two scrawny legs stuck up from under the wall." Wait, I think the house landed right on the wick witch. As the rofy looked, the legs vanished, leaving only a pair of silvery shoes behind. The woman handed them to Dorothy. These are yours now, she said. Dorothy took the shoes in a daze. Do you know the way to Kansas? she asked. I have to go home. The stranger shook her head. Maybe the great wizard can help, suggested the woman. He lives in Emerald City at the end of a yellow brick road. Dorothy packed some food and set out to for the city at once. She walked briskly along the yellow road, her silver shoes twinkling on the bricks. Wow! As she passed the field, a scarecrow winked at her. Dorothy jumped in surprise. How do you do? He asked. He talks too, thought Dorothy. He Hello, she said shyly. How are you? Not so good, the scarecrow said. I, it's very boring stuck up there. Are you all right? She asked. No. The Tin Man grunted, "I, I can't move. I was caught in the rain and I rust." Dorothy spot an oil, and can and swiftly oiled the Tin Man joints. "Thank you," he sighed. "I might have stood there forever. What brings you here?" The Scarecrow and I are going to see the Great Wizard. Dorothy told him, "I want to go home, and the scarecrow wants a brain." Uh, if he do not want a brain, how can we walk? How could he talk? How could he think to talk? Kind of weird. Hmm. Hmm. The Tin Man thought for a second. Do you think the wizard could give me a heart? He asked. Why did he need a heart? Isn't he got any blood inside? 
We're off to," he asked a moment later. "To see the wizard," Dorothy replied. "I need help to get home." "Wizard? What wizard?" said the scarecrow. "I don't know anything," he said sadly. "I have no brains." "Oh dear," said Dorothy. "Well, why don't you come with me?" Maybe the wizard could give you, give you your brains. If no, could give you some brains. So they went on together. The land grew wide, wide, wider until by evening they were walking through a thick forest. That night, they, sh they sheltered in a log cabin. The Rofi woke to hear strange groans. A man made of tin was standing as still as a statue by a pile of logs. I expect so," said the Rofi. "Then I come too," he decides. A new com competition had just set up when a lion leaped into the road. Opening his slobbery jaws, he gave a terrible roar. As the lion towered over Toto, the Rofi smacked him on the nose. "Stop it!" she cried. "You must be cold to pick on a little dog." Wow! I never seen a girl smack a lion. The lion looked ashamed. "You're right," he mumbled. "I only roar to make people run away." "You should ask the wizard for courage," said Dorothy, and told him where they're going. The lion nodded and agreed. "I come with you," he growled. "The compassion." Compatience strolled onto the edge of a forest, where a deep ditch barred their way. We're stuck," sighed the lion. "But the scarecrow has an idea. If the Tin Man chops down this tree, he could use it to cross the ditch. The ditch?、Uh, I think the ditch kind of like, hmm." Pretend this is two land, and at the middle there's no land up here, and there's a far, a far big hole up here, not a round hole. It kind of like this, like you cut it in half, and you cut a little slice, a little at the middle, for a little bit. Now you got a ditch. Now people. But if it's too close, it would not be a ditch. It need to be far.、Mm. The tree made a perfect bridge. They're almost across when they heard a fierce growl, growl from behind. A tiger monster! Whimpered the lion. We're all doomed. Quick, Tin Man! Who ordered the scarecrow? Chop away, chop away the end. My heart is pounding. But the Tin Man still wish. I wish I had a heart. The tree bridge fell with a crash, and the monster plum, plummeted into a ditch. Dorothy and her friend hurried on. Soon they arrived at the Broad River. We need a raft," declared the scarecrow, and the Tin Man set to work once again.、Mm. The raft bobbed along happily until they reached the middle of the river. Here, the current was so strong it swept them away. We'll never reach the Emerald City. The lion dived, in, took hold of a raft, and swam as hard as he could. 
Slowly, he pulled them ashore. Wow! Safely through the river, they went on through a field bursting with poppies. Hmm, and flowers. A spicy scent filled the air, and Dorothy felt drowsy. She she sank on the flower and would wake. It's the poppies. Yawned the lion. They sent her to sleep, and soon the lion fell asleep too. Luckily, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow, who weren't made of flesh, stayed wide awake. Hmm. Uh, I didn't know why. Why though? I only see. If a poppy has smell, we're not going to need to sleep, though. Run! The scarecrow ordered the lion. The lion bounded ahead, leaving the scarecrow and the tin man to carry Dorothy and Toto from the field. On and on the pair stayed there, almost at the end of a poppy. They passed the lion, fast asleep. Quickly, they laid Dorothy in the open air to recover, and went back. With much pushing and pulling, grunting and groaning, they dragged the lion to safety. The yellow brick road stretched off to the distance, but on the horizon, something sparkled. Hmm. Soon, a vast green city loomed ahead. We've made it," said Dorothy. "Look," said the lion, pointing to the, a gate studded with emeralds. "Well, if someone got the city, they'd be really, really rich, super rich." Dorothy knocked on the gate, and a man with green uniform appeared. "Yes," he said. "Please, I may see the Great Wizard?" asked Dorothy. "I can't take you to his place," said the man. "But you must wear glasses." Our city is dazzling, and he pulled out a pair of green glasses. Green glasses. Why do they need to wear green glasses? Why do they need to wear these clear glasses instead of those green ones? Hmm. And I, if they said our city is dazzling, I still not very know what is dazzling though. Including Toto and the lion too. Inside the city, city was incredible sight. The streets and houses were built of shining green marble, and all of the people wore green. The shops sold green popcorn, green hat, and green shoes. Everything was green, even the sky. The Emerald City proposed to be green and shiny, and not everything is all green. If everything is green, it's quite looking quite boring a little. The gatekeeper led them to Grand Palace. We'd like to see the wizard, Dorothy told the soldiers on board. Enter one at a time, he barked. You first. Nervously, Dorothy went inside. I am the wizard. Boom! A giant head. Where's body? Why is there only a head? Why do you see me? Dorothy took a deep breath. Can you send me home to Ka- Kansas? The head frowned. Only if you do something for me first. It snapped. Kill the wicked witch of the west. Now go. Then the scarecrow stepped in. A lady with green wigs 
Wings was sitting on the throne. I am the wizard, she said gently. What do you seek? I'm only a scarecrow, stuffed with straw. I ask you for brains. Then she ordered, first kill the wicked witch of the west. Now go. The tin man, as the tin man, he saw a terrible beast with five eyes and five limbs. I am the wizard. Roared the beast. Why do you seek me? I am made of tin, and I have no heart. Please give me heart, so I can love and be happy. He begged, but he was too, too was turned away. Whatever you want, you must first kill the wicked witch of the west. The lion went last. Now above the throne. Blaze a ball of fire! I am the wizard," hissed the ball. "Why do you seek me? I am a c c coward," stammered the lion. "I want c c courage, so I may truly be king of the beasts." Outside the palace, the friends were glum. They can't defeat a witch," moaned the scarecrow. "But we can try," said the lion. So they walked back to the gate. "Good luck," said the gatekeeper, pointing out to the path of the witch castle. "You need it." The witch, the wick witch of the west, has one, only one eye, but it saw a long way. She spotted the friends as they left the city. Strangers come here! She screeched. She blew a whistle, and a pack of wolves ran up. Tear the train, strangers into to shreds, she said. Whoa! What a bad! How bad is it? The wolf bare their teeth and dashed away. Luckily. The Tin Man here, here they coming. At the worst, the wolf reached them. He chopped off his head, its head, head again and again. He swung his hatchet until all the wolves lay dead. Wow! The witch scolded. She blew her whistle twice, and a flock of crows flew down. Pick the strangers to pieces," she snapped. This time, the scarecrow saw them coming. At as first cross, crow flew at him. The scarecrow grabbed him and swung his neck. One by one, he shrunk their neck into every single crack. Wow. Now the witch was furious. She blew three times of a whistle to fetch a swarm of bees. Sting the strangers to death! She screamed. Quickly, the scarecrow scattered straw over Drowfy, Toto, and Lion to hide them. The bees tired to attack the Tin Man instead, but they snapped their. Sting, stingers on his hard tin body and died. Ugh, those bees are just so dumb. The witch glanced her teeth, but she had one last trick up her sleeve. A cat which gave its owner three wishes. The witch has one wishes left, and she put on the cap. A crowd of magic monkeys appeared in the rush of wings. Kill the strangers! She howled. Escape the lion! I want him as my slave.、Mm. The monkeys flew off and sized, sized the friends. They pulled out the scarecrow stuffing 
and drop him in the trees. Hmm. They threw the tin man into a rocky plane, smashed him in, into pieces, and they tied up the lion to carry him to the castle. Hmm. But at the rofi, they stop. They can't hurt her, they said. Let's take her to the witch. Dorothy didn't know it, but her silver shoes gave her a great power. The witch gulped when she saw them, until she noticed how frightened Dorothy was. She doesn't know about the sh she doesn't know about the shoes. The witch thought gleefully, and set Dorothy to work. The lion was tied up outside. The lion was. Dorothy couldn't see how they were, would ever escape. Every way out, escorted by the witch slaves. But the witch has lost much of her powers. My wolves, my crows, my bees—all dead. She thought angrily. Even my cat has no more wishes left. Well, I must steal those silver shoes. Suddenly, the witch put an invisible iron bar on the ground. Dorothy tripped over it, and one of her shoes flew off. The witch pounced on it. "Give me back my shoe," said Dorothy. Dorothy crossly, never cackled the witch, and I shall steal the other one too. Dorothy was so angry she fit, she threw a pail of water over the witch. At once the witch began to shrink. Ah,、oh, I'm melting! She wailed. Soon all was left of the witch was a brown puddle and one silver shoe. Dorothy hastily put her shoe back on and raced out to the lion. The witch is dead! She shouted. The wizards, the witch slaves, danced with joy and helped Dorothy and the lion look for their friends. It didn't take long to find the battered remains of the scarecrow and the tin man. The Tin Man was soon put back together, and after the Scarecrow had been stuffed with fresh straw, now he felt good as new. Now said Dorothy, "Let's go and claim our rewards." So they packed their basket with food from the witch kitchen, covered it with cloth pack, and set it off. For after several hours, we stop for lunch. I can't wait to see the wizard," said Dorothy as she unpacked the basket. There was a flutter of wings, and to everyone's surprise, the magic monkey appeared. It must be the wishing cap. All at once, the friends were flying through the air. Before long, they could see the shining roof of Emerald City. The monkey set them down, bowed, and flew away. What a good monkeys! A wizard kept them waiting for ages. Finally, a soldier with green beard, a rusher, ran in. At this time, the room was empty, but a voice echoed. Um, I am the wizard. Why did you seek me? To claim our wizards' rewards," said the friends. The witch, which was dead. But began the voice. We want, we want our rewards," roared the lion. Toto jumped in fright and knocked over a screen in the corner. To reveal a little old man with fuzzy hair and glasses, who are you? Demanded the Tin Man, waving his hatches. 
I'm a wizard," croaked the man. "But you can call me Oz."、Mm. What about the hare, the lady, and the beast?、Mm. And the ball of fire," cried the friends. "Um, little tricks," Oz said sheepishly. "I'm not a real wizard, not even from here." I was in a hot air balloon. The blue, of course. Since I appeared from the sky, the people thought I was a wizard. They asked me to rule them and build Emerald City. Isn't it green? I said proudly. Of course, you have to wear green tint glasses for full effect. He admitted. The witches are my only fear, so I'm so glad that their house killed the first one. I would have said anything to get rid the other.、Hmm. But what about our rewards?、Hmm. Asked the friends together. You don't need them, Oz replied. Scarecrow, you're full of ideas. Lion, you're brave. You just lack confidence, and Tin Man hearts make most people unhappy. But but you promise, they said. Oh, sign! I do my best. Can you send me home to Kansas? Asked. Hmm. Uh, wait me. How could I? How could I do not remember her name? Oh, her name Dorothy. Asked Dorothy. I try, said Oz. Oz summoned everyone. The every next day, Scarecrow first, he said. He took the Scarecrow head and tip in a handful of pins. His, this will make you. Sharp as a pin, and the scarecrow felt very wise. Wow! Next came the Tin Man. Here's your heart, Oz said, giving him a heart-shaped cushion. It's a very kind one. The Tin Man beamed. Then Oz produced a green bottle. This is courage, he told the lion. The lion gulped it down. Now I feel brave. He roared. Finally, Oz led the Rofi to a basket. I mended my balloon, he said. You fly home. He lit a fire of hot air, swelled the balloon. The basket began to lift. Hurry, Oz cried to Rofi. But she was looking for Toto. She swept him up and ran to the basket. Just as she reached it, a rope snapped and the balloon took off. "Come back!" she called. It was too late. Now I never get home. She wept. Her friends hated to see her so unhappy. The scarecrow racked his new brains. "I know," he said. "Wish for the magic monkey to take you, but they couldn't help." We can't leave this land," they explained. Then a soldier spoke up. "Why not ask the good witch Glinda?" So Dorothy and her friends set off once more. Glinda lived far in the south. It would have been a difficult journey without Cap's fur wish. Please take her to Glinda," said Dorothy, and the monkeys carried them to a beautiful castle. "What can I do for you?" Glinda asked the visitor kindly. Dorothy told her the whole story, and now I just want to go home," she finished. "Bless you," says Glinda, smiling. "I'm sure I can get you all home, but I need a wishing." The wishing cap. She turned to the other. What will you do when Dorothy leaves? 
I live in Emerald City. The scarecrow told her, "I go back to my cabin," said the Tin Man, "and I go home to the forest," added the Lion. "I ask the monkey to take you. Where are you wish?" said Glinda. Then I set them free. Now you're you're very kind," said Dorothy. "But please, how can I take get home? Your silver shoes will take you," replied Glinda. "Just knock the heels together three times and say where you want to go." What a cool magic shoes! With glistening eyes. Dorothy said goodbye to her friends. Then she hugged Toto tightly, and clicked her heels together. "Take me home!" she cried. At once she was whirling through the air and rolling on the soft grass of a familiar field. Aunt Em dropped her watering can and rushed over. My darling child," she said, covering Dorothy with her kisses. "When, wherever did you come from? From Oz," she said to Dorothy. "And oh, Aunt Em, I'm so glad to be home." And it's the end. Goodbye, everyone. See you next time.